Good afternoon, everybody. It's Mike, the Bowtie Writer here. Happy Tuesday. So I wanted to have this conversation about craft books because it occurred to me I reference them all the time, and I think having a well-stocked library of books that teach you about the craft of writing is an incredibly important resource in your development as a writer. To that end, today I wanted to go over 10 of my favorite craft books. Let's get to it. First up, hands down, my favorite book on this list, Scene and Structure by Jack Bickham. The reason that I love this book so much is that he does not treat writing as some mystical, magical process, but instead he treats it as a specific thing that you can control using very specific techniques. As such, he goes over what is a scene, what's the exact definition of a scene, what are the components that make up a scene. He goes over sequels, their compatriots, he talks about how they fit together, and he gives you specific nuts and bolts of things that you can try to change for specific effects. This is the book that really let me take control of my writing instead of just trying to be guided along by my characters. Up next is Building Better Plots by Robert Kernan. To be perfectly honest, when I started reading this book, I didn't like it that much. I didn't think there was that much there. I thought that the first time I read it, I thought it the second time I read it, and then I realized, wow, I've read this like five times, and I've learned something new every single time. This is an excellent book that goes over the foundations of the structure of your plot, basic three-act structure, how those components interact, how you can manipulate those components, as well as some practical advice, like how to use index cards to actually lay out and plan your plot. If you're wanting to learn the basics of plotting and three-act structure, this is a great book to start with. Up next on the list is Story Engineering by Larry Brooks. This is an excellent book. He goes over what he considers six core competencies. Basically, these are six elements that are in every single successful and well-written book. This book was useful for me because I hadn't always explicitly thought about some of these concepts, some of these elements that make up a book. And reading this book fundamentally changed how I approached my pre-writing. Now I approach it completely differently. If you want to see, take a look at my video, The Fundamental Axiom of Pre-Writing. It's directly inspired by this book. It helped me articulate things that I didn't know before. For those of you who are more interested in short fiction, take a look at The Art and Craft of Fiction by Michael Cardos. Although his focus is mostly on short stories because it's intended to be used for a university course, the concepts are applicable to novels as well. He goes over several elements of fiction. He goes over basics like how to set up a scene, how scenes are structured, how to revise your work. On top of that, there's also what's called a boot camp, which is just an overview of the basics of grammar that sometimes tend to get a little forgotten in all the majesty of writing words. In addition, there's an anthology anthology of short stories that he analyzes and references throughout. It's a very practical, very gritty, excellent book. Up next is Beginnings, Middles, and Ends by Nancy Kress. The premise of this book is very simple, that sometimes something's not right in your book. Something is going wrong with it, and that book can be going wrong either in the beginning in the middle, or in the end. She analyzes common problems that books have in each one of these sections and gives you tips and ways to try and fix those problems. This is a wonderful book to read, especially if you're finding your book is particularly stuck, because odds are Nancy Kress has shown you how to get through that problem. Writing is not just all outlines and plots. Sometimes you've also got to actually, I don't know, write words. For those of you who are wordsmiths that want to polish up your prose, I highly recommend Spellbinding Sentences by Barbara Baig. Now this is a slim little tome, but it is actually packed full of exercises that are intentionally laid out in a specific order to help you start noticing different things, even at the level down as individual word choice. These exercises, again, these exercises take a fair amount of time to do, but they are so so worth it because they train you to start thinking about your word choice and your languages in a completely different way. It's one of the best books for prose. I highly recommend it. Up next on this list is I Should Be Writing by the Hugo Award-winning Mur Lafferty. This is a wonderful book and I love it for two reasons. Number one is that Murr does provide an overview of the writing process, but she's not getting super down into the weeds and the technical details. Instead, she's giving you a broad lay of the land and is also very open about sort of the brain weasels that can inhibit your process. She's like a great coach who's standing beside you, warning you about stuff that you might encounter while also pushing you to succeed and telling you that you can do it. There's nothing quite like that. The second thing that I love about this book is that the entire last half of it is all writing prompts and exercises. I do some of these just as a quick warm-up when I'm trying to get started for the day. They're very useful and the book overall is completely unique on the shelf. 
The last book is one of the most important books on this list, and I think it should be on every writer's shelf. It is Writing the Other by Nisi Shaw and Cynthia Ward. Say, for example, you're like me, a white guy, and you want to write a book, but you don't want that book to be just nothing but other white dudes floating around in this book. Because it's boring, and the real world's also more diverse than that. That's a very treacherous terrain, because if you do it wrong, it's potentially laughably bad, it's also potentially actively harmful to your readers, it could be just outright perpetuating racist stereotypes that you didn't even realize existed. It is a very treacherous thing to do to try and write someone who's very different from yourself. This book is a map, it is a guidebook to tell you how to do it appropriately and effectively. It gives you a way to learn it. As such, I think it is essential for every writer on their shelf, and I will also be straight, it is an incredibly difficult read at times, but it is absolutely worth it. <sighs> okay, so that was pretty quick, but I do firmly believe that every author should have a writing reference shelf that has different books about the craft so that you can spend time learning your process and learning what other people do. It doesn't replace writing time by itself, but I do think that these 10 books are worthy additions to anyone's reference shelf. That being said, I also know that there are a whole lot more reference books out there in the world, so let me know down below in the comments, are there any reference books that you find really useful about writing that I omitted? I'd love to hear about them. Let me know down in the comments or feel free to hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Bowtie Rider. Otherwise, that's it. That's all I have for this week. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. That does help me out. Otherwise, I will see you all next time.